In this video, we'll learn to draw Lewis dot structures for ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are made up of a metal and a nonmetal, or a metal and a group of nonmetals. So use the color coded periodic table here to identify which of these three are ionic compounds. And be careful because hydrogen is a nonmetal, even though it's grouped on the metal side of the periodic table. For CaCl2, calcium, that's a metal. Chlorine, that's a nonmetal. So this is an ionic compound. For NaNO3, Na, sodium, that is a metal. And then we have N and O, nitrogen and oxygen, which are both nonmetals. Metal in a group of nonmetals, that's ionic. And finally, H2O, water. Hydrogen, that's the one we have to watch out for. It's a nonmetal. Oxygen is a nonmetal. So that's not an ionic compound. That's a covalent compound. It's important to note that in ionic compounds, the metal that will transfer those valence electrons to the nonmetal. And this influences how we write Lewis structures for ionic compounds. So let's write us some Lewis structures. We'll start with the iconic ionic, NaCl. To write the Lewis structure for sodium chloride, NaCl, we first look at the periodic table. We see sodium, that's a metal. Chlorine is a nonmetal. So we have an ionic compound. Let's write Na and then Cl. Next, we need to figure out how many valence electrons each of these elements has. So we go to the periodic table, and we can see that sodium, that's in group one, and those elements have one valence electron. So let's put that out there. Chlorine, that's in group 17, sometimes called 7A. It has seven valence electrons. We said that in ionic compounds, the metal will transfer its valence electrons to the nonmetal. So we have the one valence electron here, and we'll transfer that to the chlorine. And when we do that, the chlorine now has eight valence electrons. It has a full outer shell called an octet, which is very stable. The sodium doesn't seem to have any valence electrons, but the shell underneath is full, so it too has a full outer shell. Because sodium lost a valence electron, and electrons are negative, it's become positive. So we'll put a plus out here, which stands for one plus. The chlorine, it gained that electron. Electrons are negative. The chlorine's now negative. By convention, we should put brackets around the negative ion. You'll also sometimes see brackets around the positive ion as well. And that makes this the Lewis structure for NaCl, sodium chloride. Understand that what we drew, the Lewis structure for NaCl, is actually what's called a formula unit. When you have a crystal, that's made up of a bunch of these formula units in a regularly repeating pattern. So you can see the crystal here on the right with its repeating patterns of NaCl. But by writing the Lewis structure for the formula unit, that helps us understand the behavior of those valence electrons. Okay, your turn. Pause and write the Lewis structure for CaCl2, calcium chloride. We have our calcium, and then we have two chlorines. I'll put one on each side. We know that calcium has two valence electrons because it's in group two on the periodic table. And then chlorine, just like before, group 17, sometimes called 7A, seven valence electrons. The metal will transfer electrons to the nonmetal. So one will go here to give an octet to this chlorine. The other one goes here. And now since the calcium has lost two valence electrons, it has a two plus charge. The chlorines, they've each gained one electron. They become a one negative. We put brackets around the chlorines. And that makes this the Lewis structure for CaCl2. Let's do one more, NaNO3, sodium nitrate. We have sodium, that's a metal. And then nitrogen and oxygen, those are both nonmetals. So this is an ionic compound. Let's write the Na. And then NO3, it's called a nitrate, and when you see this A-T-E at the end, you know that's a polyatomic ion. So it's going to stick together. The nitrogens and oxygens, they're tightly bound together. So we'll write NO3. And sodium, because it's in group 1, it has one valence electron. But then we have this NO3 polyatomic ion, and that's a little bit challenging. Because the N and the O, those are nonmetals, and it's tightly bound together, we need to do a Lewis structure just for NO3, the nitrate ion. So we'll replace the NO3 with a Lewis structure, and you can check in the description for the video for a link on how to draw the nitrate Lewis structure. So here we have the Lewis structure for NO3, 
and we said that the sodium, being the metal, will transfer that valence electron to the nonmetals. Since it's lost the electron, it becomes a 1 plus, and the NO3 that gained it, that becomes a 1 minus. We put brackets around the anion, the negative ion, and that makes this the Lewis structure for NaNO3, sodium nitrate. There are links to more practice in the description for this video, and you should make sure that you can draw the Lewis structures for compounds made of two nonmetals, covalent compounds. This is Dr. B with How to Draw Lewis Dot Structures for Ionic Compounds, and thanks for watching.